So this is the most important lesson in data engineering. And people are telling you all kinds of stuff, but this is it. So check it out here. What you need to look at is, and remember, there are two types of use cases. There's the main use case and there's an analytics use case. That's always the thing. Main use case is something like you have a, an e-commerce store where the actual transactions are happening, right? That's where this, where the customers buy stuff and then they look at the user interface at their purchases. The analytics use case, that is usually where you have the data and somebody at the end within the company is going to look at that data and is going to analyze that data, right? So remember these two use cases and then how are these usually, uh, how, or how do these usually work? Now, you, you very often with main use cases, you have this event driven, right? There's some event happening at the at the user end and then this will lead into some kind of a transactional database, not necessarily a relational database, some kind of a transactional, and then there's user interface, there's a website, there's an API on the other side where somebody sits. That's the main use case. And then on the analytics side, you often have it scheduled, that the data is coming in scheduled, it's going into a analytical data store, and not a transactional one, like something like Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, these kind of things. And then you have analytics tools. You have BI tools here where actually they're taking large amounts of data instead of here where usually small amounts of data are transmitted here. Um, they're requesting large amounts of data and data is going to get analyzed and going to be sent to the analyst here. So remember this. This is very important. Main use case, transactional stuff and analytical stuff. If we want to go a step further here, let me go to the right. So how does the data usually flow, right? The data flows from transactional to analytical. That's the typical data flow that you always have. And then when people talk about reverse ETL, that's what they have here. They have where the data actually flows from the analytical stuff into the transactional system. Keep this in mind. This is a super important lesson to learn. The, forget about the tools, forget about the processes, forget about the data first. Think about these two use cases. Look at it from the use case side. Analytical use cases below, transactional use cases here on top. And usually, how does the data flow from transactional to analytical? Because the main business use case for the company is a transactional use case very often. So remember this, this is a top tip. If you understand this, then you can go further. You can look into tools and understand, okay, um, these kind of analytical tools, these are for the analytical use case, these kinds of a transactional tools or stream processing, this is for the uh, transactional stuff. But uh, one more thing, of course, 100% always this case, right? Because you could have it that your main use case, there's event-driven data or event-driven things happening and it's not flowing only here into the transactional stuff, but it's only also going directly into your analytical data store. And that's also something to remember, right? That's why I meant this is not always present the case, but it's a good overview of uh, how data platforms work, how data processing works. So keep this in mind.